welcome back to Boots Over Heels, a Southern Grace clothing podcast with me, your host, Jade, based here at Southern Grace's headquarters in Carrollton, Texas. This week, I wanted to expand on the conversation that we had with Alana Sarabia on our last episode about work-life balance and have our first how-to episode. These episodes will expand on concepts that we discussed in stories, in interviews, and my hope is to motivate you, share useful tips, and have a conversation, albeit a little one-sided, with you. (laughs) I wanted to talk about work and life this week because last week we spoke with Alana about pursuing our personal lives. And next week, hint, hint, we will talk with someone about pursuing our work lives. I want to take a second to breathe in the middle between these two episodes and talk about simply prioritizing our own happiness. I think as women, we can often feel lost or unsure of ourselves. We want it all. We want friends, family, work, love, a clean home, a dream job, six pets, a mansion, 10 cars, an Instagram. Maybe not all those things, but (laughs) my point is, It can be easy to feel overwhelmed when we try to do everything at once. I know I've done that in my work life, in my home life, and I know that I personally have struggled with maintaining the different sectors of my life. It's easy to buy into the idea that everyone is perfect, and that's simply just not true. None of us are perfect. Mostly we're just trying our best. (laughs) In that vein, let's talk about how to relieve some of the stress of juggling work, life, and more, and how to simply prioritize being happy. We will discuss mindset, priorities, and tangible real life advice for getting what you want in life, whatever that might be. So ladies, let's talk first about mindset. We are all different. Maybe you don't even struggle with juggling your roles at all, although I think that might be impossible. (laughs) Maybe you struggle with your role as a wife or a mom, a friend, a student, business owner, self-care, whatever it is that you struggle with. Even simply cleaning the house, who knows? I think a lot of stress can roll off our shoulders by simply shifting our mindset just a little bit. Let's talk about how it's not possible to have it all. (laughs) That sounds really dark, let me explain. (laughs) I only need to say that in our lives, we cannot spend an equal amount on everything. You cannot give 100% to four different areas of your life. This would be like doing 400% effort every single day. It's just not doable. When I was in college, I came across this Venn diagram that I still think a lot about. It was mostly a joke, but I still took it to heart and thought of it as essentially true. It basically said that in college there are three categories, sleep, friends, and good grades, (laughs) and that you can only have two of these things. It was pretty true in my experience. Back then, I sacrificed sleep, and I do not recommend that. (laughs) But it does show you what I mean. You can't do everything all at one time. Essentially, it's impossible to be perfect. If you want to be the perfect mom, worker, wife, student, I think right now you should take a moment and breathe and listen to me as I say that just doing the thing is enough. You are enough right now. Whatever you're doing, you deserve a break, relaxation, a breath, a cuddle from somebody. (laughs) You deserve forgiveness for mistakes or not reaching every expectation you create for yourself. Taking a moment to unload guilt and blame for times you feel you've wasted your time or spent in the wrong way or didn't achieve your initial expectation can be so beneficial. That guilt and shame may feel deserved at first, but really it's just holding you back. You may want to use it to motivate yourself to be better or to do better, but stress can just keep you from doing that very thing. It's okay to binge Netflix instead of doing your homework or forget the dishes, or maybe you messed up at work Everyone is human. It's okay to make mistakes. Everyone needs a breather. Tell yourself out loud right now that you forgive yourself. You'll learn from your mistakes and that you'll let it go. So how do we shift our mindset to prioritize happiness? We need to realize that we all tend to set expectations for ourselves that are just too high and we need to decide to forgive ourselves for our mistakes. It might seem crazy, but by lowering the bar for yourself just a little, You'll be able to meet it every day and hopefully that'll give you more confidence and happiness in your life. So now that we've forgiven ourselves for being human, let's talk about how to determine our priorities. In life, I feel like our first priority is to be happy, but each of us are made differently. What exactly makes you happy? What makes you specifically feel fulfilled? I'd like to do a little exercise with you about priorities. Every day when I get to work or start my day, I write down six things I want to do in order of importance and I fulfill them in that order. We'll talk more about that in a bit, 
But for right now, why don't we sit down together and write down our top six priorities for our life, what we want to get done, and what makes us feel fulfilled. For the purpose of the episode, I'll tell you mine in order. Mine are my love life, my family and friends, my schooling, my job, my health, and creating new experiences. Now, just because I put my health, for example, at number five, that doesn't mean it's low priority. There are so many different priorities for for me to choose from, and these are just my top six out of probably 35. (laughs) They're not my only six priority. Feel free to personalize these to you. Is one of your priorities cleaning or cooking, or maybe it's learning a new language or traveling or reading a book or self-care? We're all different. Make this list for you. What do you prioritize in your life? Now, once you've determined your priorities, think about how you actually spend your time each week. And if you can, try to write the approximate number of hours that you spend on each of these next to each priority. Does your priorities list and the way you spend your week match up? Because if it doesn't, maybe it's time to make a change. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we all work a lot of the time, so that number of hours might be a little skewed but maybe work is your top priority. And right now you are happiest when you're working and that's great. But if work isn't your top priority, maybe you should make other changes like making sure you leave work at the same time every day or not taking home work with you. Maybe it's simply not using your phone at the dinner table. If work isn't your first priority, by the way, that doesn't mean that you don't try your best at your job when you're there. It just means that you're setting healthy boundaries for yourself and time expectations for yourself. This list isn't supposed to stress you out, by the way. Quite the opposite. For example, I'm a bit of a romantic, and I know that I'm happiest when my partner and I are happy and when I spend time with my family and friends. Because of this, I spend most of my week spending quality time with my husband and my friends and family. However, I also tend to think I'm wasting my time if I'm not creating something or working or being productive in some way. Because of this in the past, I've felt guilty for quote unquote, wasting my time. But now that I have this little priorities list, I don't blame myself anymore for the time that I spend with my friends because while it may not be necessarily productive, it does make me happy and I know that that has value. The point of this exercise is to help you pinpoint exactly what makes you feel fulfilled and to determine if your time is being spent in a way that benefits you. But I also want you to know that these aren't hard set in stone facts. (laughs) We all go through seasons of life where our priorities might change or shift. Perhaps you're in school for two years and you're willing to sacrifice a lot of time so that your dream job gets a little bit closer. The week of your wedding or honeymoon, for example, will probably have different priorities than your regular work week. (laughs) But simply being aware of that change and knowing what your number one priority is can be helpful for knowing what to expect from yourself. This shift in mindset from wanting to do all of these priorities in your life, all six of them all the time, to simply knowing what's most important to you, what your number one is, can relieve a lot of stress. And sometimes, hopefully, it'll motivate you and give you permission to do what makes you happy. So let's talk now about how to succeed at what you are prioritizing. (laughs) Whether it's your career, being a wife, being a mother, whatever, how do you make the most of that one thing? And what can you start doing today? I've collected 10 tips to organize your life and time so that you can focus on that number one priority. First of all, do our little exercise if you haven't done it already. Even if you don't wanna do all six priorities, write them all down, at least admit to yourself what number one is so that you can follow that path. The reason to do six though, is so that you can show yourself, even if your number one is your number one, that there are five other things you should diversify your time with. Make sure you're fulfilling all the corners of your life. My number six is new experiences. So a couple of times a year, I like to plan to do something I've never done before. Because of this, I've been skydiving, I've been to Italy. In college, I once skipped two days of classes and went to a concert for one of my favorite bands. This has added a lot of fun to my life and so it's become a priority for me even if it's my last priority. Another thing you can do, and this is something you can start immediately, is talk to people who share your goals. Make friends with people who share your priorities. If you value your career, try to make a friend that also prioritizes their career. This can be networking, network your heart out. If you're like me and you value your love life, maybe you have lots of married friends, which is true, I have lots of married friends. Friendships can often fizzle if you guys have different priorities. 
And having friends who understand how you spend your time and talk about the things you care about can benefit both of you. Number three, set goals for yourself. Specifically, try to set SMART goals. What are SMART goals, Jade? SMART goals mean different things to different people, but essentially SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. It sounds silly, but these goals are applicable to every priority, even personal ones. For Boots Over Heels, for example, I have a SMART goal that is time-based. My goal is to get to 2,000 downloads in our first three months. In my personal life, I like to spend three hours a week talking with my friends. Because of my SMART goals, I know exactly what I'd like to achieve and I'm still being flexible at the same time. Knowing your goals can demonstrate your growth and your successes and it can also relieve any stress from not reaching your too high expectations. <laughs> We've all sat down and made a list of the things that we want to do that day and the list ends up being like 20 items and we get two done. We've all done that. <laughs> Set reasonable expectations for yourself. Four, along that line, make that priorities list every day and keep it to six. It shows your SMART goals, and when you're done, you're done. There's nothing else for you to do, and you can spend your time in a different way. I do it at work, I do it in my free time, I do it for this podcast. Now, also remember to be flexible, though. Sometimes you're not gonna reach even those expectations, even the six ones that you write down, sometimes it's not gonna happen. But the list will hopefully plan your day right and set you off on the right foot and help you feel productive, and hopefully it'll help you also plan and prioritize that number one. Next, make a morning and a bedtime routine. So you guys, I personally don't like routine. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, but I find routine feels really boring to me. I like to change things up every day, keep it interesting, do different things, but sometimes my spontaneity works against me <laughs> and I forget things or things fall through the cracks or I stay up too late and then the next day my day is kind of ruined <laughs> or I procrastinate something I wish I had started earlier so a compromise that works for me is that I usually try to have a bedtime and morning routine. The time in between is whatever I'd like it to be, but my morning and night kind of keep me in check and I can be more productive overall. In my morning, for example, I like to drink coffee, I read my book, I make my bed, and then I make my list for the day. It's super simple. And at night, I try to stay off my phone for about two hours. I read some more of my book and I usually listen to a podcast and then it's bedtime. So choose whatever works for you. But for me, controlling that morning and night can really set me on the right course for my day and for my sleep. And it's helpful for my body to kind of get used to it. Number six, plan room to relax. Plan a weekly splurge or a nightly pamper time. <laughs> on my weekends, I like to walk to my plant shop and I usually buy a plant or at my bookstore, I'll buy a book. Maybe your relaxation time is that you take a bath every night. Whatever works, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that you plan the time to relax. Otherwise, you might forget it completely, or if you're like me, you'll relax while you should be doing something else, and because you're so stressed out, because you're not doing that thing, it doesn't feel like you're relaxing at all. <laughs> Let's avoid that and just plan our relaxation time. <laughs> Number seven, keep in mind Newton's first law. Jade, why are you bringing this up to us? Well, <laughs> Newton's first law states that an object in motion stays in motion. What I need to say is that humans also tend to follow this. If you sit for 10 hours one day, the 11th hour, you'll probably also keep sitting. Try to plan your days and weeks with this in mind. For example, if you know that next week, 80% of your time will be on vacation and 20% will be allotted for work, Try not to plan anything too intensive for work that week because for most of your time you've been chilling and I can't imagine you'd get too much done in that 20% of work time. Prepare for that. Leave simple stuff to do. Just know that whatever you're doing, you're going to want to keep doing. If you're having a super productive week, maybe try to do that thing you've been putting off because you'll feel like being productive when you're productive. It's just a simple fact to keep in mind. Remember Newton. Eight, follow your own timeline. Sometimes it's easy to forget that our bodies and minds don't always work on the classic seven day work week or the nine to five schedule. Know what works for you. For example, I tend to do better in the afternoons and evenings, and I usually feel the most productive from Monday to Thursday. 
I plan my week with that in mind. I hang out with friends on Fridays. I don't hang out with them on Tuesdays because usually I'm working. I like to keep that in mind, you know, because otherwise it's easy to kind of let your week fall apart. Number nine, leave room for spontaneity. <laughs> I once heard something, I kind of forget where, that said you should leave two hours a day to be wild. I like that phrase because it implies that life works best with a combination of both planning and spontaneity. <laughs> you should plan to have two hours of time in a day where you are just wild and there's no rules for yourself, there's no expectations, you do whatever you want. It's so strange, but I think that that is a great way to think about life. Try to plan time for spontaneity. Try to keep in mind times you'll want to be wild. It feeds the soul and I can't imagine it would hurt you to have that freedom. 10. Lastly, don't be too overwhelmed by this episode. Don't overthink what you're doing. Essentially, all I'm trying to say is do what you love. If you love your job, if you love your family, focus on that. Make time for it. Maybe you aren't a planner at all. For example, Stephen King has said that when he writes novels, he sits down and starts writing. He doesn't plan a plot. He doesn't plan in any way. He simply starts writing just whatever comes to his brain and he lets the story take shape as he moves through it. And maybe that's more your speed. Do whatever works for you. All I wanted to say is that in our last episode, we talked about how important it was to invest time into your personal life. And in the next episode, we'll talk about how important it is to invest time into your work life. But in between the two, I wanted to reiterate that you should focus on whatever you enjoy and what makes you happy and what makes you feel fulfilled. Life can be complicated, but for the most part, let's try to remember that it's as simple as doing more of what makes you happy and leave it at that. Thank you for tuning in for our first how-to episode, ladies. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please help me reach my own smart goals for this podcast and subscribe and review us on your favorite platform. It would make me so happy. I would appreciate it. If you have any tips of your own for happiness and work-life balance, why don't you follow us on our social media at Southern Grace One, the number, and leave us a comment. I would love to see what tips you guys have for organizing what matters to you. I'll see you guys next Thursday for an interview with someone from Southern Grace all about how to create the career you want, even if you don't have a degree. So thank you so much for listening, ladies. This has been Boots Over Heels by Southern Grace, the podcast where we understand Southern women because we are Southern women. Goodbye.